Take your flight controller. Here we have a tornado with the signal wires routed as shown. Mount the flight controller and install the remaining standoffs. At this time, check the polarity of all your ESCs before plugging them into a current limited source like AA batteries, programming the ESCs and then connecting them to the flight controller. For the tornado, rear right is one, front right is two, rear left is three, front left is four. And the motor outputs on the tornado from the USB side are one, two, three, four. To firm up the XT60 connectors, I just use a couple of round wooden toothpicks, removing a couple of millimeters from the end, and then push them gently into the XT60 and cut flush, as flush as possible, and then just jam them down. Not too forcefully, I don't want to splay the connectors too much, just enough to keep them firm. Take your receiver, some paper towel and alcohol, clean off the back of the receiver, and the frame where the receiver is going to mount. Cut a square of servo tape to the size of the receiver. Apply, remove the backing, connect the lead and mount the receiver. Connect the flight controller power. For the tornado, positive is on the USB side. Take the flight controller cover and four M3 lock nuts. Place the flight controller cover on top of the flight controller and then the nuts. Tighten down. Placing the ESC signal wires on these sides keeps them out of the way of a prop strike. So as these props rotate counterclockwise, they'll strike there first and there last and the same with all the positions. Now is a good time to take your programmed flight controller and power up. And test the motor's arm and all turn in the right direction. Clockwise and clockwise. Before installing the VTX, it will be placed face down. So just take a picture of the order of the connections, particularly that ground is on the outside and supply inside, and this is a non-standard order, video, ground, and five volts. And also, cut out the switches so that you can use them. And now you can change channels. In cable tying the VTX on, we're looking for the end of the VTX can and the cross piece on the flight controller cover. We need to run the cable tie through there to stop the VTX sliding forward in a crash. Bend the cable tie, pass it through in position, do both at once. Start the cable ties. Then slide the VTX into position, tightening the front one first to get the cable tie into that recess, and then pull tight. Making sure it's secure as possible. Trim off the excess and insert power lead and you will be able to access the channel switches through the top plate when complete. Take eight standoffs and eight M3 by six cap screws. Working from the center out, place the screw through first, hold it from underneath as you finger tighten the standoff on top. Repeat for all eight standoffs. Using the 5mm end of the Turnergy wrench, 
orientated on the standoffs so the crossbar goes across the frame and this lines up the flats of the hex standoffs to fit the camera assembly. Hold from above and tighten from below. Allowing it to turn slightly as you reach the end and then cinch the top with the crossbar of the wrench. Measure the camera cable at around 9 centimeters and cut, strip, and then twist the wires crimp new connectors. If you don't have the proper tool you can reuse any others by just soldering them onto the connector. Check the order of the pins on your VTX. Here it's 5 volts ground video and replace the pins in the housing in that order. Take your camera assembly from the previous steps and insert the lead securely. Coil the lead to take up the slack. And I find it easiest to plug in before the camera goes in. Make sure it's pressed in securely. Keeping the coil in the wire and the wires out of the way. Drop the assembly into place and making sure each tab is pushed down into the frame. The box section is designed to be tight to add strength bracing against the carbon plate and the standoff and the top plate and the standoff so there's no room for movement and it's braced in both directions. Don't tighten the tilt screws on the camera until after the top plate is assembled and the tabs are locked in. I prefer the straight SMA pigtail on the 5 inch. It's slightly lighter and with a coil it fits better. Heat the cable gently and evenly. When the insulation's warm just twist it a bit past what you need it to be and just put a gentle curve into the cable forming it into more the shape that it will be in the cord holding it until it cools. Remove the nut and lock washers and install onto the VTX. Take a 8mm open-ended spanner, move the cable slightly back from where you want it to finish in place, tighten finger tight and then cinch with the spanner just past finger tight. Do not overly stress the SMA connector on your VTX. That completes assembly up to being ready to install the top plate.